for-profit corporations, which, in my opinion, is the purpose of the whole enterprise in the first place. It's just a big money-making thing. It's not to protect the country. It's not to protect the kids. You know, these are kids who have been separated from their parents at very, very young ages for, you know, at the border and put in these very unsafe and damaging conditions. Um, so I've, you know, I've been creating music around that issue, and um, that's been a, a big preoccupation of, of many of us, as, you know, the welfare of the children. Um, yeah, definitely. I can definitely understand why that would be a very concerning issue for a lot of folks and everything. Would, could you mm-hmm. see, please give us your, the website where folks can learn more about your music and everything? And I definitely want to continue the conversation. I think I heard of Bail as well, so I might have to bring in a couple of other guests. But I don't want you to get off the phone call, but if you could right now share your website, that would be greatly appreciated. Oh, thank you for asking, because you know what? When I was talking about the website, I didn't mention it. Uh, it's www.silvernightingale.com. And silver is S-I-L-V-E-R, and nightingale is N-I-G-H-T-I-N-G-A-L-E.com. I'm just spelling it out because people tend to put an E in the middle of nightingale for some reason. I don't know, old English spelling. Um so that's silvernightingale.com. That has links to my CD Baby page where you can, you know, purchase No Nuke Swing for 99 cents and some of my other music, my meditation CDs, my Facebook. Um, I've got also links to other CDs that I've donated some of my original songs to to benefit various organizations and causes and Tons of information about birds and the environment and nukes and also, of course, where I'm playing and uh, lots of lots of information on there. Okay, good. Well, definitely uh, stay on the call because I definitely want to play a couple of more of your songs and everything, but I also want to bring in uh, some of the other guests. Uh, Dean, I think I've got Jenny on, who's a speaking of people that are about uh, health and wellness. I believe that that is a young lady that is a yoga instructor who is putting out a new yoga Program, so I think that might be who that is. But if we can bring her on as well, we'll bring her in in just one second. Appreciate you. This is Nikki Hall, founder of Simply Radiant LLC, a woman with great passion and skill to make you look and feel better. Meet me where you are. Let's take it to another level, a new you. See you soon. Call nine one nine. Nine seven one six two four three. Make your place today. And Jenny, welcome to Straight Talk with Dana and Mark. You are now on the line. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. How are you doing, Jenny? I've met you off of Instagram, and you were telling me about this wonderful new program that you are putting together. So. I was wondering if you could share a little bit about what this whole Blissana is and everything, and I probably totally butchered the but pronunciation, <laughs> but I'm sure you will correct me in the correct oh, way I've of pronouncing it. I have got your back. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, again, I'm Jenny, and I uh, actually today just released a 21-day yoga program, and the name of the yoga program is Bliss Asana. So it combines the word bliss, which is that feeling of excitement. And asana is, um, asana, I'm sorry, is the uh, word for yogic postures. So bliss asana is this practice that is really about boosting your mood through movement and also involving self-discovery and mindfulness techniques to really involve in 21 days where someone can come in and focus on themselves, kind of get away from all of the roles that society expects them to be and kind of get out of survival mode and get into yourself again, really work with your own intuitive power and experience this through 21 days of movement and mindfulness. So the and how did you get involved actually, in this and everything? Because like I said, it sounds yeah. like a wonderful program. So how did you get involved in yoga? And also just to kind of like put things in a shared contrast and everything, we also have on the line, the Silver Nightingale, who's out of the Florida area. And I know Asheville also has a very active activism community. So I was wondering if you had had an opportunity to tie activism into what's going on in Asheville, because I do know that Asheville has a very active activism and musical community. Yeah, oh. well, I got involved in, yeah, I got involved in yoga um, 
really, I am a videographer and a filmmaker, so I spend a lot of time on the computer editing video, and it was really bad for my body because I was just constantly sitting, and it's very stagnant and bad for the body to be constantly sitting. So I started taking um, some different fitness classes, and nothing really struck me, but I took um, one class here in Asheville from my friend Cynthia, who owns Primal Studios in Asheville. And her class in particular really woke me up, and it really, really busted me out of, like, my normal routine and made me feel really good in my body. And over time, I was taking her classes and getting involved more in yoga, and I was able to see how, for me, it's not just, like, you know, physical, but there's something that happens to my mood when I get to experience a practice with really good music, with really good community or even just with movements that really inspire my body to change and shift my mood and change my state and my perspective. So that's how I got involved. And over time, I you know, got certified at Asheville Yoga Center and took their training here. And that was a great experience. It was actually a 30-day straight of um, training in yoga. And I just realized now and made the connection that, you know, being involved in a 30-day training and then putting together a 21-day course, I must like those uh, those shorter, like, you know, big, like experiences back-to-back every day of learning because I chose to structure my program the same way. So that's kind of interesting now that I think about it. Uh, and I went through that program and, you know, learned as much as I could and started teaching right away actually at Primal Studios. And over time, um, I actually developed an injury from participating um, not really from yoga but from – still continuing my lifestyle of sitting on the computer and doing work and then trying to do higher intensity exercise, I found that I needed something kind of in the middle. And that's where my practice at home started to be a little bit more sustainable, um, a little bit more forgiving on my body, but still was able to maintain the aspects of the practice that I really enjoyed, which was high energy music and, you know, just being able to move freely in your body and involve aspects of dance with yoga. So all of that kind of came together, and as someone who is, like, obsessed with self-development and self-discovery and really just becoming the part, the version of myself that I can give the most in the world, that's my, you know, highest goal. So that's sort of how this program was born, because I, I really believe in the activism that comes within yourself. I've participated in outward activism as well, which is very important to me. Um, I did a documentary film about Tangier Island, uh, which is an island in the Chesapeake Bay that's actually um, disappearing as we speak. 500 people live there, and that documentary, I did that when I was in film school, and I got to go to the island and basically put together, um, it took me three or four years to put together a video and a film all about that island and bringing awareness to what was going on with their island due to erosion. So I've participated in outward activism, which I'm very uh, passionate about, but I'm also passionate about what we do individually because I really believe that it starts within. And if we are able to heal ourselves on an individual level, then we are able to collectively heal the consciousness in our planet and really really participate in activism from an even stronger place when you're individually in tune with yourself and you've done the self-work. Can I Definitely. can I jump in and ask a question? Because one of the things that I've seen in activists for many, many years is that a lot of activists do not necessarily take the best care of themselves. And I, yes. I'm no paragon in that way either, but I definitely agree with everything <laughs> you're saying about self-care. I mean, I, I try anyway. And and I'm not talking about myself here, though, but some of the activists down here who I know who are incredibly dedicated on a daily basis to because mm-hmm. they care so much. You know, they're trying to yes. like, do something to help kids who are suffering, and it just breaks their hearts. So they just will do it beyond the point of physical wellness. Mm-hmm. And I'm always trying to encourage people, hey, you know, it's okay. Like, you need to take a break. Take care of yourself. Take a minute yes. off. Take a day off. I haven't really found anything that people really want to listen to because they just – so I guess my question is have you encountered that with activists you know and have you found anything that is helpful in encouraging people like that to really do better self-care? Yeah, I mean, I have experienced that, and I've experienced it, you know, anywhere from, you know, mothers and people that are working hard in their daily lives 
all the way down to people, you know, that are activists and that want to do, do all of the good in the world. And, you know, for me, it is that very cliche statement of putting on your own oxygen mask first. Mm -hmm. However, we can't lose sight of other people. And I think it's that balance. It is very tricky. How do you do both of those things? But I think by the awareness of putting out this type of information, just the same way as if we want to impact people in the world with our, with our ways that we want to influence our community, I think that if we can get these messages out to people however we can with our own individual gifts and talents, I think that's the way that we reach people. Uh, as a filmmaker, I try to make content as much as I can that can you know, strike a chord with people and remind them to look out for themselves. And I just think the more that we have the conversation, the more we can brainstorm creative ways to do that. I haven't found one particular way yet. Um, <laughs> as far as, like, marketing this program, it's not just about, of course, like, you know, selling this program. It's about letting people know and bringing the awareness about, like, themselves and their own self-care. And I think that is what drives me is just getting that information out there in my small way and just being a part of the conversation. Definitely. And what was the difference between your program and, say, other programs? I'd be curious to know what some of the differences are. Well, I haven't taken a lot of yoga programs. I've taken a lot of yoga classes. So, you know, you go to a class and you'll, you can experience such a wide range of, like, physical aspects. Um, but in particular, with my program, it's unique because I believe we all have a way that we create something that's individual. So with me – you know, it's a combination of just different things that I've learned in my life. And for me, some of the most important things that I've learned have been working with the chakra system, so working with the seven chakras in our body, and also um, healing, working with the past, the present, and the future. So in my program, um, week one focuses on honoring yourself in the present and allowing yourself to just be who you are and acknowledging it. It sounds really simple, but we are constantly looking to the past and looking towards the future to what we want to become. And I think we need to sometimes realize, like, hey, we're okay right now. Like, look mm -hmm. and, and look around my life and, like, see the things that I've already created. Like, even being in our house, you know, we overlook some of the most beautiful things that we've created around us, even just the way that we may have, like, decorated a room or, you know, just certain things that we have and certain uh, amenities that we have in our life. One of my biggest goals is to awaken the awareness that the mundane, the things that seem mundane in our life are actually more exotic and more extraordinary than we realize. So through the program, every day has a different intention, and I think that other programs might have that. I'm not sure, but this in particular has a different intention every day, an affirmation that is basically a statement of really reclaiming yourself and reclaiming beliefs that are strong about yourself. Uh, it has a journaling prompt that seems to ask the right questions that can inspire you versus a lot of the questions that we ask ourselves that might inspire more lower energy responses. And then there's the yoga videos, and they're filmed out in nature out here in the Blue Ridge Mountains and some of the most beautiful places that I've been from waterfalls to the mountains. So really look to the environment for my inspiration. And even the music, uh, I'm working with all local, not local, they're all from all over the world, but independent artists. So I have hip-hop co conscious rap. I have, um, you know, like tech, tech, tech and beat bass music, sorry, and soul music, like a whole range of artists who, you know, I've just been able to interact with and find online and bring them all together into this kind of mixtape. So it's really just like a part of my soul kind of coming out and being like, hey, let's split up together. Let's kind of experience this and see where it can take you. Well, one thing I've got to mention, and I've got to bring in two other guests that we've got as well, but one thing that I want to sure. mention to you is that uh, we actually had Nicole Baxter on recently, and Nicole Baxter is an interior designer, and part of what she talks about is actually creating interior designing that it, it reflects your personality. So kind of like what you're talking about doing with yoga, she's doing with the interior designing because she says that she's been in the houses and you don't even capture that person's personality when you walk in the house. It's very staid and doesn't have a yes. lot of their personality. So part of what she's encouraging people to do with her interior designing business is to actually have interior designing and that have the house reflect them, whether that's an artwork that reflects their personality, whether it's other things to reflect what they're about, but not just have that kind of very cookie cutter kind of thing. 
That's so cool because it's like being more conscious and intentional with your life, whatever that 